winter evenings, the field mouse's oldest friend, Mr. Mole, would come to visit. He lived in a deep burrow, and he never saw the sun or the sky, but he was very well to do. The field mouse told Thumbelina that the mole had the best stocked larder of all the animals in the wood. Of course, Mr. Mole fell in love with Thumbelina, but being a very cautious animal, he didn't say anything. He dug a long passage between his burrow and the field mouse's house and invited the field mouse and Thumbelina to visit him whenever they wished. But, he warned, be careful in the passage because there is a dead bird lying there. Don't let it frighten you. The next evening, they set off to visit Mr. Mole. And just as the mole had said, they found the body of a dead swallow. Thumbelina could not believe that such a beautiful bird had died. She knelt beside the still body and leant her head on his breast. To her amazement, she felt a faint ticking. It was the swallow's heart beating. He wasn't dead after all. Thumbelina stroked the bird quickly and hurried after the field mouse. That night, when the field mouse was snoring peacefully, Thumbelina crept out of bed and gathering up a soft eiderdown and an acorn shell full of water, she hurried back to the passage. The swallow was still lying there. Thumbelina arranged the cover over him and gently stroked his head. As the warmth crept into his bones, the swallow slowly opened his eyes. Thumbelina gave him a few drops of water. Thank you, my child, whispered the swallow. You've saved my life. Every night, Thumbelina visited the swallow, taking him water and scraps of food to eat. As the swallow became stronger, he told Thumbelina how he had hurt his wings so that he could not fly very well, and that when all the other swallows had flown south as the winter started, he had not been able to keep up. How, finally, he had fallen to the ground and tumbled into the passage where he had lain until Thumbelina found him. In return, Thumbelina told him the story of her life and how she had been kidnapped first by the toad and then by the maybug. As the winter wore on, Thumbelina realized that Mr. Mole was in love with her. The field mouse thought it was an excellent match and he told Thumbelina that she was very lucky. Thumbelina's only friend was the swallow. She poured her heart out to him. I'm sure the mole is very kind, but I couldn't bear to live all my days in the darkness underground, she told him. The swallow urged the girl to fly away with him. I'd love to come with you, cried Thumbelina, but I can't let the field mouse down. He has been so kind to me. Finally, the day came when the swallow was strong enough to fly away. Thumbelina helped him to dig his way out of the passage. And then she stood in the warm sunshine, waving goodbye as he soared into the sky above her. As Thumbelina had thought, Mr. Mole asked her for her hand in marriage. Thumbelina, my dear, he said. I think you will make me a very good wife, and in return, I have lots to offer you. I have a very large burrow, stocked with everything you will need, and as I am so well off, you will never want for anything. You will never have to bother about coming out into the horrible bright sunshine and searching for food under that nasty blue sky. We will be happy forever, deep under the earth. Poor Thumbelina. Her heart sank at these words. All summer long she sewed and darned and weaved, getting her clothes ready for the wedding. Mr. Mole had decided that they should be married in the autumn, just in time for the long dark days underground. As Thumbelina sat in the cornfields, she looked around at the flowers and the leaves, the insects and the butterflies that she would soon have to leave behind forever. She wept bitterly 
And even the kind old field mouse was no comfort. What nonsense! He would snort. I cannot understand why you are not jumping for joy. You will have the richest husband in the whole wood. But Thumbelina knew what she wanted. The sky, the sun, light and fun. The day for the wedding dawned. Thumbelina took one last walk outside in the sunshine. And as she raised her eyes to the sky, she saw a familiar shape. Her swallow. He had come back. This time Thumbelina did not hesitate. She climbed onto the swallow's back and hung on tightly as he climbed high into the sky. The bird flew south over forests and lakes, snow-capped mountains and blue, blue seas. At long last, they reached the warm lands that the swallow had told Thumbelina all about during the long nights in the mole's dark passage. Slowly the bird began to descend towards a gleaming white palace with high walls and pointed roofs. This is my home, he told Thumbelina proudly. His nest was set among flowers and trailing leaves in the garden of the palace. Thumbelina climbed down from his back, weary after her long journey. She looked around her with amazement. She was surrounded by trees and flowers and a beautiful perfume filled the air. Thumbelina clapped her hands in delight. She climbed up towards the nearest flower. And then she saw in the center a handsome young man who was no bigger than her. On his blonde hair he wore a perfect golden crown. Goodness, whispered Thumbelina to the swallow. He is. The swallow introduced Thumbelina to the king of the flowers. He bowed very low and smiled at Thumbelina. She was the most beautiful girl he had ever seen. He took his gold crown off and placed it on Thumbelina's head. Gently he asked her name and as she replied, Thumbelina, he took her hand and asked her if she would like to be the queen of the flowers. Oh, yes, replied Thumbelina. I would like that more than anything in the world. Slowly from all the other flowers around emerged the little flower dwellers. They were overjoyed that their king had found such a beautiful bride. They brought them gifts of jewels and serenaded them with lutes, flutes and tambourines. Thumbelina and the king of the flowers were married and they lived together happily for many, many years. Thank you.